Hey everybody, and welcome to The Overlay, a poker podcast brought to you by CCG Poker and Paramount Social Club in beautiful Houston, Texas. Hey Brando, how's it going? Pretty good. What's up? Yeah, a little improv. That was a nice, clean, clean, clean intro there. Oh yeah, we feel did... like you didn't think about it. You didn't. You didn't no. really. That's a good one. I didn't. I didn't make anything up. Uh, we just kind of banged out Start two ranting. hours. Yeah, we just did two hours of commentary for the twenty k free roll. So I was like, "There's nothing better than when you have t- two and a half hours of commentary." Hey, let's record a podcast right after that. Right. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Uh, We wanted to get in one more episode prior to the WSOP main event 2022, uh, which will be at Bally's this year, which will be different, right? Will be different. Yeah. I mean, nobody knows what it's like because nobody's played a main event at Bally's before. It's always been somewhere else. I'm excited. But that's I mean, it's pretty close. But that's not really podcast material right there. Nah. <clears throat> it's old news that it's going to be at Bally's. Uh, but I wanted to talk to Brando today because he's the only resident team CCG or who has played at the WSOP. And then I was like, Brando, let's do a uh, like a pre like a pre episode on the main event and like what to expect and what to do. And you were like, but I've never played at Bally's before. So I really can't tell you a whole lot. But I was like, you're like, where's the registration line? I'm like, I have no idea. Well, I thought we could do some kind of easy stuff. Like, I wanted to go over what you and I are playing because there have been some changes, yeah. mostly from yep. me, not really from you. Uh, we do have now, spoiler alert, if you want to watch the, or if you haven't watched the YouTube final table of the uh, CCG 2022 $20,000 WSOP main event winning final table featured on YouTube CCG wow, Poker TV. Long. Uh, don't listen to the next 30 seconds. Just hit like two fast forwards. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, Joel, who is our winner of the 20K free roll and is going to the main event. I'm so happy that he won. He is beyond the moon to have won this promotion from CCG Poker and is going to play in the main event. And you and I have talked about this. This is a dream like come true for him. And it's truly a once in a lifetime deal, right? Yeah, no, he's super, super pumped. And sent a few super nice text messages yeah. to us. So, which is I not, mean, he's pretty stoked to go. Yeah. And it's not necessary. I mean, we would have done it if like a jerk won either way would have been fine. Of course. But like, I'm super excited about it. And Joel's wife, I believe, is going to go for the first like day yep, or two. She's going to go. He got vacation off work, which so. is great. I hope he fucking wins the whole thing. What a <laughs> Cinderella story. Early bird player wins a seat in a free roll. Like moneymaker does has nothing on Joel right now. Like Joel is going to be like the he man. Just created now another poker boom. I mean, we could be the the starting point. This could be the start of the <laughs> second or third poker boom. It was like Wild West. Wild Bill Hillcock gets shot. Ace ten be- or Ace eight becomes a thing, and then moneymaker wins the what o two. I don't even remember. Oh, whatever. Right. So he yeah, went somewhere in their right. 03 main event. And then Joel from CCG A7 himself comes through and wins the whole thing on a freaking free seat that he won by playing an early bird and second chance tournaments at CCG would be freaking awesome. I'm I super agree. excited. All right. Let's just do the mild breakdown of like what to expect when playing the main event in the sense of I know you're not going to know like exactly what registration you go to, but like. What did you need when you waited in line? Like, give me the breakdown. What happened? You're oh. like, it says main event registration. Get in line here. Yep. And you, and you got in line. Like, what happened? Yeah, it was like after dinner. Or it was like before dinner break on the first day. But it was like a few hours in, like maybe three hours in. And I just got there. And I like, I was like, what do I do? And like Todd was there. And I was like, oh, nice. yeah, over here. And then, um, yeah, the line was about an hour plus long. And again, you were trying the problem to was, hold on, well, hold, the on problem hold on, is, hold on, hold on. Okay, you okay, were trying okay. to register. Holding, holding. You were trying to register for that day's event, or you were trying to yes. register for yeah, like, yeah, tomorrow? that day. Okay, no, no, that day. Sorry, but the problem is, is basically at Rio there was one line mm-hmm. for any tournament that you're registering. Oh. It's just one line into the cage to play, and then you walk up to the running. cage. There's a bunch and of tellers say, I'm playing this, yeah, and ask to play in X. Yes, but now there were like the crazy eight 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 was going on. I mean, there was like there's like four events going on at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like the registrations open for the main event being one of them. So it was a very long line. Now, luckily, I had a diamond card that I got a Caesar's diamond from playing 
at the Horseshoe. So they have like a separate VIP line, which was still 30 people deep. That's a but, hell of a lot better than the alternative. But I yeah, guess the you. other one was like a 200 people deep. So you, you know, and that, that took me, you know, 12, 15 minutes to get through it. So I kind of ran good and I had the diamond card. But that is, that um, is a run good. I'm assuming that they would be the same this year, that it would all be in one line. So if you're registering at prime times or at other times when there's other big things registering, think about that. Just be prepared. That Are the lines open while. like 24 seven? Yeah, they're open. They're open all Yeah. And there's people that go in there and they register for the next day or yeah. the tournament three days early. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know when they open. But, so it's not like there's, I mean, just, there's people in line. It's no, not like it's you have not to like get in like a specific line. You're just getting Correct. in the registration line and then you go up to the bank and be like, I want to play this or that or whatever. Yep. Now, once you get to the teller and you say, I would like to play the 2022 main event WSOP series of poker seats. Nah, I was kind of just like, cool, like I've been doing it every year. I'm like, right. just the main. main event. Actually, main main. no, I wasn't because the next question I asked was, can I use a credit card? And she was like, yes. And then I responded with, cool, here's two of them, put 5000 on each. <laughs> and yep. then she responded with, uh, so you can't do that. If you're going to use a credit card, you have to put it all on one card. And I was like, oh, oh I was told differently. That's not and what I, I thought. Just, whipped out a 10k bundle in cash and gave her that right and then yep. and then she followed up the next question with what do you do for work i was like oh this is great i'm a I professional like, poker I'm player a, i'm a professional poker player like everybody else says. yep i mean you should have so, been like maitre d bathroom attendant <laughs> just made something hilarious up yeah, yeah no, I was, now did you have to sh- i was nervous was you had fine. to obviously show id or did yep. they your ID, your player card, obviously, you need to have a player card when you register. Any so you tournament. do need a player card. Yes, which you always end up forgetting. Not having. Not that, not I that, never have yeah, one. You never have a player card, and then you always forget that you need a player card. Yep. And I always got to go back in line, which normally back. when I'm at the Horseshoe in Hammond, Indiana, playing the circuit downstairs. event, it's not nearly as bad. Well, at least it's not a terrible spot. But I also am like like you. I'm a late regger. I don't get there right at the start. I don't pre-think about this stuff. Yeah, or, whatever's so. in your bag, if you're, if you're charged or charged, it is. That's so make sure on. you have a valid ID. Did You You didn't need like two forms, just like a form of ID. Nope. One and, ID. and your player card. Yep. And then either and have money. all cash or, all, or yep. all credit on one card. You cannot do a hodgepodge of like payments here thousand on yeah there's there's joel doesn't have to worry about that because i will be buying him in but uh he'll still need an id and some other things but that'll be super fun um i think joel is playing day one b which is monday so everybody wish him luck i will personally be there for uh his monday debut the day one b um i am flying in on saturday uh, and I have switched things up. I decided I was Wait, not... Saturday the what? The 1st? July 2nd. Oh. little birthday flight, huh? Yeah, a little birthday flight. It'll be my birthday, which will be sweet. Feel free to wish me happy birthday on that time. Uh, but yeah, I'm flying in on the 2nd. I land in Vegas at like like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm going to go straight to the Rio and just play the 10K PLO main event. Event number 69. <laughs> that's that's uh that's a great little plan there. I kind of just gonna go yeah. rip a, rip a ten k plo. I also my my two cents is I was finding some different rooms to stay in, and I think I have I have not officially confirmed. I have like two reservations. I got to cancel one of them. Um, I think I'm gonna just stay at Treasure Island. One, I like pirates. Two, it's just <laughs> down the street. It's an 18 minute walk from Treasure Island to Bally's. Which isn't bad. It's just on the the strip, so I don't have to actually like. Because it was funny, one Google way, like Google Maps, took me like was like two minutes faster, or maybe one minute faster. But it had you like going behind buildings and shit, which I do not recommend doing while you're in Vegas. Stay on the strip. It's the safest yep. place for you. Don't be walking around with anything. On both side streets. Yeah. No, it's just it's not safe. I don't care if it's three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon. Just don't do it. There's no reason to do it. Just Stay on the strip. You're going to save two minutes. Uh, Skeech got robbed um, behind the McDonald's there on the strip. Um, There's like a little food court next to Harrah's. You know what I'm talking about? 
I do actually. It's like in between Harrah's and then like I think Venetian's like the next hotel, but there's like a little bit of like weird break and there's like a McDonald's. It's a super fancy McDonald's. I think there's a Panda Express. Long story short. Yeah, and there's a nice Taco Bell there too. Correct. I think there's a Wendy's there. It's like a little mini food court and uh, Skeech got robbed right outside of there. Um, Now granted, he left Harrah's at like three o'clock in the morning and like went out a weird side door because he was pissed on a bad beat. Long story short, he got mugged in like the it, right in that like area. But if he had just walked out the main way, like great. Right, been fine. I mean, the likelihood of you getting in trouble in Las Vegas is significantly lower, exponentially lower if you just stay the main course. So anyways, I will be staying at Treasure Island. I believe that's what I'm pegging on. Are you sure you don't want to stay with me? Oh, that was funny. And yeah, you like said pegging on too. I like that. Did mm-hmm. you even know? Mm-hmm. You, oh, you saw it. I got all of it. I wasn't sure. I got all of it. Um, yeah, no. I'm I'm staying at Caesars. I liked Caesars, but it was twice as much because I waited too long. And I still might. My other reservation is at Caesars. So I'm like, do I really want to spend double the money? Because I will yeah. be there from Saturday afternoon until Thursday evening. I fly out Thursday evening. So it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm there for five, you know, five nights, six days. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I might, I might go with the Caesars because that's typically my go-to spot is Caesars. I know where everything lies from Caesars like exits, where yeah. it's like I know what direction this is. I know what direction that is. So if I stay somewhere else, I'm like completely. F- I have I, my whole You're sense of direction is wrong. It's the same thing. I stayed at Venetian for the first time ever this past March Madness, just because. The Wayne and Aria were way too expensive. And those are the two I usually stay at. And I was like all switched around for the first like half of the trip. And finally yeah. you understand what's going on. But um so here- I have Diamond again this year. So I got I booked a seven night stay, five nights for free, and oh, pay wow. for two nights. That seems so way better. my Friday is 120 bucks and my Saturday is eight hundred. I should have gambled for more. that Saturday. If I'd, gambled, if I'd have gambled more, I would have that, and I could be doing so. I'm in a thousand, so much better. Thousand, yeah, a thousand bucks for seven days. Yeah, it was like three grand for me, which was way too much. So, and anyways, it's less less days and less days. Uh, okay, so basically, right now, uh, you now know how to get in. One, and then give us the Brando tips of when you're playing the main event and you're expecting to play multiple very long days in a row. Do you have like a a Brando goodie bag. Obviously, you're bringing a book bag. Bring a book bag. Bring yes. a book bag. Fanny pack, something. They evolved over the days. I thought, you know, I brought what I thought I needed, and then there was other stuff. I was like, oh, I need that. And then just like stupid things, like a uh, like a toothpick, like a little picker. Oh, with a little that's on actually it. Super you know, like smart. you think you would never ever need no, that. I would never think but, of like, that. Over the four days, I was like, by day three, by day three, I was sending Allison to Walmart or to Walgreens to get some because I needed them. Yep, you know, I was like, like that. That's that's kind of big. Yeah, it really is. I always just had a portable charger, had some like any sort of medicine you'd ever need, like tums and like you know headache stuff and. Tylenol is always a good one. Like snake, yeah, just snake venom Tylenol kits. And... You know, like if you got bit by right. a snake, you Correct. might need that. I mean, you might need that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, just your standard poker stuff. You know, a lot. Of, I wear too big of clothes, but a lot of people just like pack a, a hoodie or something to another layer of clothing if it's freezing in there. Don't usually wear sandals because it's cold and your feet get cold. Short of that, maybe like a backup pair of plug-in headphones if your AirPods die. You know, yeah, it's kind of the one the thing that I'm not a fan. Stuff. Right, I'm not a fan of it. Oh, what about snacks? Did you bring any snacks? I did bring like small, like granola, like power bar-y snacks. Um, I did use the All American Dave guy once I learned about him and how to use that. Used him multiple times on days three and four, but I think he went out of business or Bally's wouldn't allow him to use a part of their parking lot he like made all of his stuff into a little trailer and then a little food truck and then oh, brought no it kidding? to the players tables yeah everything was like organic and fresh and like their smoothies were like 18 dollars. but like when i was hungry and it was noon like i was ordering a smoothie on twitter but so they were really great but they're gone now so i want to figure something new out 
But yeah, some snacks just to get you through. I mean, you have a break every every two hours, so it's a ten minute know. break every two hours. It's a fifteen minute break. Oh, that's actually the, kind of a lot. The, yeah, and then the it actually might be a twenty minute break. Problem is though, it's funny. I, I actually think it's a twenty minute break. I have seen some stuff on Twitter where people are like, "We're twenty minutes late coming back to our twenty minute break because there's so many people trying to get back in the door that they it's yeah like they can't." Yeah, I think that that was just that like reunion or that five hundred dollar one that had like twenty one thousand people in right. it, which you're gonna have some logistical nightmares there. Yeah, for um, sure. Hopefully, they'll have that cleaned up by the main event. One would assume, you but yeah, so. I mean, there was one of our one. I remember when we when they had to color up the black chips, which is like their biggest color up of the whole tournament. Mm-hmm. Um. It was like maybe like a forty-five minute break. I think they like told us like it's a twenty-minute break, but it's probably going to get extended to thirty minutes. So they ended up just putting thirty minutes on the clock to start with. It's pretty standard. It it's like tough to get all of that stuff done. Minutes. Yeah, and you know, with that many people, and they, you know they want to make sure they don't screw up. And it's a lot of just double checking. It's easy on the surface, but everybody's got to do it. Everybody's got to get double checked. So I mean, that'd be what I would bring. I don't know. I was always eating. I had like a little routine where I was eating, you know, breakfast, little breakfast spot that I would go to. And I was lucky enough to just drive right into the back of Rio Park and walk right yeah. in from the wind. So I don't know, like, if you're walking or, you know, to time those walks and stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty safe. You could still stay at Bally's or Paris if you want. I mean, it's not going to be the nicest room. It's kind of like, you know, if you want to stay at the Rio, you always could. It was convenient, but the rooms sucked, but they were cheap. Right. It's just like, uh, you know, if you're there just to play poker, stay in the Rio. If you like the way that you're or not, the, now it's Bally's. If you like your room and the amenities of a nicer hotel, then you're going to have to deal with the logistics of walking and timing everything else. But in all honesty, from before, that was a standard anyways, right? Like everybody had to it walk was. or get stuff to Rio because nobody really stayed at Rio. So it's actually, no, I think it's if you're a true poker grinder where you stay in a Rio. I think it's so much better that the events or that it's now on the strip it makes it, it so much better accessible from wherever you are and not only that but it'll also make the side games like did you play when you played in side games meaning like cash games or other tournaments where did you play at i mean you played at like during the series did you play anywhere else um i played at the wsop like their room oh they, they did they have a cash game room like right they there do. they do they had a room and then they had like the king's room which is like you know like the high stakes cash mm-hmm. that it it was nice. I mean, the games were really good there. I mean, obviously, it's like I think that was kind of underrated. Like, I played in the Wind games and the Aria games and thought, like, man, these games aren't very good. And then the both times we played at the Rio, which would be, you know, on site at Bally's or Paris or wherever their cash game room is now, uh, it was really good action. I yeah. was kind of surprised. I think like, it's just people that were just busting out of tournaments and were dumping. It was kind of yeah, crazy. We'll see how that's affected by the fact that that was when you were kind of stuck at the stuck Rio. At and the now Rio. that you're not really limited and you can right. play at the Venetian, Uber, you can play at the Wynn, you can play at Treasure Island. Do they still have a poker room? I don't even know if they do anymore. I think so. It's Either way, Treasure room. Island, you're across the street from, from the everything. Wind. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it is nicer, I think, in that point. All right. So let's do one last thing and then we're going to call it a night for the end of. Uh, kind of the pre WSOP. Pre Vegas, yes. So basically, the way the Twitter takeover is going to go this year, because that was a huge bonus last year, Brandon's social media takeover of Twitter, um, kind of just doing some hand breakdowns and like kind of keeping up with what was going on with Brandon. Obviously, you played for what, like till day four? Yeah, halfway through day four, which is amazing. So that's still pretty awesome. I'm hoping for another Brandon setup. But as of right now, uh, Team CCG will start with me. Uh, I'm going to play that Event 69, the 10K PLO. I'm going to play that on Saturday. So it'll be me, hopefully, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, because it's a four day event. I'm hoping I get to play all four days. At least day three. I got to make it to day three, which will be Monday. Uh, Joel. Uh, we'll be doing he'll be making his main event debut on Monday. Um, that's the second day one of the main event. So he'll be playing then. I will probably be doing the so tweeting that is for the him. Fourth of July, right? Yes. It depends on if I'm still in the PLO event, then I'll just be making some like random you know, I'll yeah. be doing both, um, yeah. which would be Text super cool. And, and then and give you one hand. Correct. And then when do you get? Um, when do you then get to I'll Vegas? I'll be in Vegas Tuesday the fifth. 
right? Um, and your day one is going to be? Wednesday the 6th. Which is the last day one available. Day one D, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which would be awesome. So, yeah, that gives you at least a solid Saturday, Sunday, Ken, Monday, Ken, and and part Joel, and then hopefully a uh, then nobody will be playing on Tuesday, right? Nope. And then you'll and be, I'll there. be there bright and early. Yeah, and then you'll be there on Wednesday. So Tuesday, expect a kind of a, a during the WSOP uh, breakdown and kind of what's going on. Because uh, when you and I are going to get there, we're planning a recording on Wednesday. We'll probably have Joel on the podcast if he still stays in town. Um, I will invite him to come over and maybe do like a little interview and kind of talk to him about how his first main event as like, and I don't want to call it like a rookie, but like, you know. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Kind I mean, of way, no I mean, way to sugarcoat all, it. all of us, you and me included. Yeah, for are, sure. This is out of our normal realm of tournament. I don't play $10,000 events like it's it's be the first time ever. And it is literally 10 times more than I've ever paid to play in a tournament, but I'm very excited about doing it. And I think it's great marketing. And I think we can all kind of talk about like the differences in how that is. And hopefully Joel can kind of join in on us, um, which will be great. But, you know, we'll do another podcast then, which will be what, like near the kind of the f- like during it. And then hopefully Brandon makes another sweet run and uh, wins the whole thing. And that would be awesome. Him or Joel yeah, well, is really the only two I'm pulling for. <laughs> really, more more Brandon because I don't get any action from Joel. So we'll see. That's how that true. Goes. You you got a little Brandon I might, action. So. I might try to talk him into some action on because he's flying in on Sunday uh, with his wife. So I might see if they want to go to dinner or something on Sunday night, uh, or maybe breakfast on Monday, or see what he wants to buy in, and we'll kind of go from there. But I'm very excited. It's going to be an awesome Vegas trip. It'll be my first experience for the WSOP. Um, I know you're a, kind of a resident pro now that this is year number two. Um, but yeah, I'm um, I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm actually I'm actually think I'm more excited this year than I was last year. I am year. too. Yeah, and I have zero expectations. So like, if anything happens that's cool, I- I'll be stoked. And even if not, I'll just be super fanboy running around with uh, what's our boy's name there? From like Paul Liam. I'm gonna be Liam's freak. I'm gonna donate my time to Liam and be like, I'll be your personal ex- assistant. You'd let me know whatever you want, and I'm gonna run around with Liam. I'm gonna wear a sport coat. It's gonna be great, and I'm gonna be awesome if I get busted in the tournament, or I'll still be in in event 69, which I'm really hoping to be in that 69 for a long time. Which I've been kind of dying to say in the podcast for a long time that I want to be in 69 for as long as humanly possible. But I think that's pretty <laughs> normal in general. But I'm Probably. very excited about it. So. I think that's going to do it for our pre WSOP. So follow us on Twitter. Twitter's going to be big. I'm sure I'll still post some stuff on Instagram and Facebook, but predominantly for kind of like midday updates and a couple of breakdowns of what's happening in the tournaments for myself, Joel and Brando, which is the three legs of the team CCG. You got to follow us on Twitter at CCG poker. That's it at CCG poker. We're pretty funny. I like a lot of fun stuff, so hit us up. Brandon, you got anything you want to say? Any any words of wisdom besides the good ones you've given us so have, far? No, I don't really have much else. I'm just ready to see you guys in Vegas. And I mean, I'm sure we'll see a lot of other people out there. Yeah, you know? it's like, yeah. I'm I mean, excited. Join, join the forces of Team CCG. Come and see us. Come and see us. Come and hang out. Let's do some drinking occasionally. You can see me drink every once in a while. Uh, I don't. I, mean, I don't. I haven't gotten drunk with you since 2015. So yeah, I'm ready. you're gonna you're gonna see a drunk Ken at some point in Vegas, <laughs> and it's great. gonna be great. And I'm gonna be just spewing money at like this teeny tiny one one game at Treasure Island because that's all they could get off, and I can't don't wait. Worry, for if it you're to there, happen. I'll come join you. It'll be the best one one game of all time. Uh, thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us. Uh, actually, make sure you follow us on Twitter, uh, the Overlay's Twitter handle, which is um, at the Overlay Pod. So the Overlay Pod P O D. That's it. Uh, we'll catch you next time. And uh, next time we see you, next time you hear our voices, we'll be in Las Vegas. Be an awesome WSOP. Bye, everybody.